If you could open your Bibles to 2 Samuel 17 tonight. 2 Samuel 17 is where we'll be. I love these books, the Samuels, the Kings. I love the Old Testament history. It's some of my favorite passages in all of the Bible. The biblical examples that God gives, I believe, are so easily applicable to our lives, our hearts, and I believe there's so much to learn. David, personally, is my favorite a character in the Bible, character in, in, the, in biblical history. Um, he's one of the most mentioned men in all of scripture. I believe he's actually named more than anybody else other than Jesus. So uh, he's, he's very frequent. And people that are, that are almost unfamiliar with scripture as a whole would still recognize the name David, specifically with David and Goliath, even on the unfortunate side, maybe David and Bathsheba. But we're familiar with David's life. Uh, there are many things that we've seen in his life and then we may have heard in Sunday school or heard in a message and applied to our lives. I believe a common theme in the life of David has to do with the idea of security. Security. Where is your security placed? Where did David place it? And when you go all the way back to his early days, when he was really no, no older than, than a teenager, he, he placed his security in God in ways that were amazing, truly. He was able to conquer a lion and a bear with his own hands. That's pretty amazing, but he didn't do that alone. God clearly gave him the opportunities to do so. Then he was given the opportunity to fight one of the greatest enemies his nation was facing. Imagine if we as a country were so terrified of an enemy that we ended up resorting to a teenager to fight that battle for us. That's the picture that we have. They gave the battle to David and David stepped up. He didn't, he didn't take Saul's armor. He didn't trust in the security of that. He didn't trust in the security of his own strength, that he certainly did not have to fight a seasoned veteran of war, Goliath. Rather, David stepped up and placed his trust, his faith in God, and that's how he was able to conquer him. What an amazing testimony as a young man putting his security in God to such a degree that he did all of those amazing feats. You move on in David's life, and there were certainly times where he struggled. Though he had originally placed his security in God, there were times where temptations overcame him to the point where he, he did place his security in things that he should not have. There were times he placed his security in the world, placing his security in the Philistines, even though he had fought against them originally when King Saul was chasing after David, jealous that David was going to take his place at some point. David ended up trusting the Philistines, hiding with them for a while. And that led to great consequences. That was never something God intended, to hide along with the enemies of God, almost placing himself in a position where he would have to fight some of his own men, some of his own, uh, some of his own friends, some of his own countrymen. He almost got to that point. Thankfully, God protected him from that, but there were consequences to hiding with the Philistines. David almost lost his whole family, and many of his servants, they almost lost their families because of this sin that David had placing his security in others. You move on further in his life, after he became king, after God delivered him through so many different terrible circumstances, David ends up quite comfortable in his kingdom. Becomes comfortable giving the responsibilities of battle to other men that were entrusted to him. So comfortable that as all of these men were fighting his battles, he really didn't have enough to do. He was not taking advantage of the responsibilities that God had given him and ended up getting distracted, found himself in terrible sin with the woman Bathsheba, a sin that resulted in consequences that lasted for the rest of David's life. Of course, he lost one of his children to it, but then the complications that came through his family ended up hurting David for the rest of his life. One of these consequences came in his son Absalom. His son Absalom he was an interesting guy. He was an interesting guy in that he was a very popular person. Absalom, when he became, when, when he became uh, older, when he, when he became a man, uh, was very popular among the people of Israel as, as they would come to him with different issues that they had. They realized that Absalom seemed to care about their hearts. He was a good counselor. He seemed to be good at listening to people. And so the hearts of the people were given over to Absalom. They trusted him. They trusted David's son rather than trusting David, the king at the time, who, who they really should have trusted. Rather, they started to trust Absalom. They appreciated his personality. Uh, some even appreciated his looks. The Bible tells us that he had beautiful hair, a hair that many people were attracted to. They were attracted to this man. 
he, he had a lot of, a lot of gifts, truly, that God gave him. And unfortunately, he placed his security too much in those things. David, at this point, had learned through many different experiences how important it was for him to place his security in God. But here we're in a position where Absalom became so consumed with himself that he wanted to take over his father's own throne. Absalom wanted to kill his own father. And so that's the position that we're in when we get to 2 Samuel 17. David is on the run once again, not from just any king, but from his own son. His own son wants to kill him. And so Absalom's trying to find out some perfect way in order to take over his father, remove him from life, so that he can then live a supposedly comfortable life of luxury and fame. That's Absalom's desire. David's on the run. And we see a number of different examples, again, of where security is placed. We're going to start in verse 14. Verse 14 says, And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai the Archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel. For the Lord had appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel, to the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. Then said Hushai unto Zadok and to Abiathar the priests, Thus and thus did Ahithophel counsel Absalom and the elders of Israel, and thus and thus have I counseled. Now therefore send quickly and tell David, saying, Lodge not this night, in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily pass over, lest the king be swallowed up and all the people that are with him. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for all that you've provided for us. I thank you just first for the the free opportunity to meet together with other believers in fellowship and also in worship to you. It's wonderful to be able to do that without fear of any physical consequences. We can come and, and converse with other believers and be able to worship you as a congregation. That's an amazing thing. I'm thankful for that. I pray that we would take advantage of that in the sense that we listen to what you have to say in your word fully. I pray you'd kind of remove me from the situation and rather just speak through me. Don't allow my words to come through. Um, There's a temptation for that sometimes, and I pray that you'd remove that. Instead, speak your word through me. Communicate to the hearts in here, and I pray that um, all the hearts that have gathered together here tonight would be sensitive to what you'd have to say to each individual. It can be difficult to to hear and also apply to our hearts sometimes. We need your help with that, God. And so I pray that you provide that tonight and that you give us an overwhelming sense of peace and comfort in where we need to move our lives in accordance to to your will. In your name we pray, amen. So um, I know we're in Colorado, which means that there is a lot of skiing going on in the area. How, How many of you have skied before? Figures, okay, that's that's a lot of hands. Uh, that's that's great, okay. Skiing's an awesome thing. I've only been once, and that once was troublesome to say the least. I uh, let's see. Uh, my wife, her her extended family lives up in Montana. So after we got married, our first Christmas we spent in Montana with all of them, which meant we had to go skiing, right? They all wanted to, and so part of a Christmas gift for me was to get to go skiing with them. Um, how exciting! I was actually looking forward to it, and I felt like I would be somewhat of a natural at it. Um, I had I'd played some sports before, and that kind of gave me confidence. And that confidence was overloaded when the guy that rented the skis to me said, "Have you played sports before?" And I, I said, "Yeah, I've I've played soccer and baseball." baseball. I played those in high school and he said, you'll be fine then. And so I'm thinking, okay, good. I'll be fine then. I get to show off to Lex's family and and impress all of them with my brand new skiing skills before I've ever done it before. I really felt good about myself. And I was, I was truly convinced that I was going to be taking the slopes pretty easily, but obviously that was not the case. (laughs) Um, It was funny. Her grandpa had told me before I went up, Hey, it'd be really smart to get skiing lessons. Um, it would very much benefit you and you'd enjoy the day a lot more if you did that just for, you know, an hour. And I, I thought about it, but not really. I, I, I was nice to him and, and said I'd think about it, but I didn't, I didn't consider it, unfortunately. And I didn't take the lessons. Rather, I just hit the slopes. And forget the bunny slope. Um, I just went to, you know, one of the, one of the <laughs> honestly, this was a horrible decision for me. Um, I got up and for the first three and a half hours of the day, all I did was fall. It was not fun <laughs> at all. I remember telling my wife, I am, I really never want to do this again, if I'm honest with you. Um, I went out one for a little bit later and, and eventually got the hang of it somewhat. I hung out with her fourth grade cousin for the rest of the day and we went on the easier slopes. So that worked out, but it really was embarrassing for me. I, I boosted my own confidence and security to a point where 
it was extremely defeating for me, especially as kindergartners were flying past me and, and asking me if I needed help when my skis were lost and stuff. Um, that really was, it was, it was hard for my, for my confidence, for my security. It's a bit of a silly example, but that really was an exemplification of where I misplaced my security. I trusted in myself more than I should have. I placed confidence in myself that really was, had no base. It, it didn't have any, any sort of foundation. It's an example in the sense that we need to remind ourselves sometimes that even in the smallest things, we ought to place our security in God alone. Because nothing in this world, no person and no thing and no institution can provide that sense of security for us. We certainly can't provide that security for ourselves. We must place our security in God alone. God wants us to place our security in him, and so we ought to. We ought to place our security in him. And he's given us so many amazing examples for this. When we look at the example of Absalom, we talked about him and where his mind was in this passage. Um, how did we get to this point where he's, he's racing after his own father? Um, where, where, where was he exactly getting his advice, his counsel? Well, there was a man that helped Absalom with many different things. His name was Ahithophel. He was a counselor that once worked for David and eventually switched sides and came over to Absalom's help. Uh, he was a very skilled counselor. God had given him many talents in order to give advice, war counsel, things like that. And Absalom always took it. Uh, David had always taken it previously. Now Absalom is very comfortable listening to Ahithophel. Uh, but there's a little bit of confusion that happens when he's listening to Ahithophel this time. I um, mean, the first verse in 2 Samuel 17, it says, Moreover, Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Let me now choose out 12,000 men, and I will arise and pursue after David this night. So Ahithophel gives Absalom some advice. This is how you conquer your father. If you, if you follow the advice I give you, all of this will be over in a matter of moments. Just do as I say, and this will all be taken care of. And Absalom was quite pleased by this. Verse 4 says that. The saying pleased Absalom well and all the elders of Israel. But then something happens. God does something to the heart of Absalom that leads to an action that he may not have committed otherwise. In verse 5, it says, Then said Absalom, Call now Hushai the archite also, and let us hear likewise what he saith. Why would he call another man's counsel when he'd already received one that he always trusted in previously? Who is this Hushai the archite, and why would he listen to him? God had a plan for Hushai. God had placed him under the service of Absalom very, for a very specific reason. And we see that in 2 Samuel verse, or chapter 15. Just a page previous, if you'd like to follow along. Verse 32, it says, It came to pass that when David was come to the top of the mount, where he worshipped God, behold, Hushai the archite came to meet him with his coat rent and earth upon his head, unto whom David said, If thou passest on with me, then thou shalt be a burden unto me. But if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been thy father's servant hitherto, so will I now also be thy servant. Then mayest thou for me defeat the counsel of Ahithophel. And then our key verse in 2 Samuel 17, verse 14, says, The counsel Absalom had said, and Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai the archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel. For the Lord had appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel to the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. The whole reason that God directed Absalom to reach out to Hushai for additional counsel was so that Absalom would come to his own defeat. Absalom became so comfortable with placing his security in what others thought. In the lives of others, he ended up facing evil that led to his own death. Those were the consequences of Absalom placing his security in places that he never should have placed them in. He refused to trust in God and rather trusted in the counsel of the world, the counsel of other people. There's a temptation for us to do that often. It's easy for us to place our security or our trust in some institutions, uh, the, the, the institution of family. Sometimes it's easy for us to place our security in that. Okay, I've got a comfortable family unit for myself. I, I can enjoy this, but... 
we ought not place our security so much so in something like that, even a positive thing like family to the point where we are forgetting God, the God that gave us that family to begin with. Uh, There's a temptation sometimes even to place our security in something like government or something like an institution that uh, is supposedly provides protection for us, provides uh, some sense of security in that sense. But uh, those things, they all involve people. And if you recall Romans 3.23, all people are sinful. All have, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We must keep that in mind and remember that we cannot fully place our trust and security in other people or in things that the world has to offer because those things will fall through. They're fault-filled. They are, they are guilt-filled. We, we don't have the opportunity to trust in them in the sense that we have a strong foundation for those things. We must remember that the only strong foundation that can be provided for us is through God. God is the only one that can provide those things. Nothing in the world can. Certainly no person can do that for us. Not the reputation of other people. It's easy for us to place our security in the reputation of others as well. Thinking that what others think of me is what guides me. As long as I have a good public opinion, as long as people view me in some kind of positive light, I'll be fine. But that's not a secure place to place our trust in. We must remember that only God can provide those things. We cannot place our security in others or in anything that the world provides. We also can't place our security in ourselves. We've talked much of Absalom, but I want to I focus in a little bit more on Ahithophel. When you think of this man, Ahithophel, a man that God had given one of the most amazing talents to, the, the talent of, of counsel, it's an amazing gift. To be able to give wise counsel for just about any situation. And people always listened to him. David constantly listened to him when he was under his service. And then when Ahithophel came under Absalom's service, Absalom consistently listened to Ahithophel's guidance until this moment. What is Ahithophel's reaction to the moment where for once in his life, he's not listened to? The gift that he placed so much confidence in, so much trust in, is pulled out from under him. What happens? What is his reaction? The Bible gives us the answer. In verse 23 in 2 Samuel 17, it says, And when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass and arose and got him home to his house, to his city, and put his household in order and hanged himself and died and was buried in the sepulcher of his father. This is an extremely sad passage. There's no cheering for something like this. No excitement. Even if this guy is on the wrong side, he ended up in consequences that were extremely feeble, extremely sorrowful. Realizing that what he had placed so much confidence in no longer mattered to others. No longer mattered in the sense that he could find some sense of security in that. He felt like there was really no reason to continue on his life. The ultimate result of security being taken from you is a removal of any purpose that you feel like you have in life. We must remember that God is the only person, God is the only thing, God is the only one that can really provide us with a sense of security that gives us consistent and continual purpose, lasting, fulfilling, gratifying purpose. Nothing else can, certainly not ourselves. There Again, there's a temptation for us to do so. Um, even those of us that have been a part of Christianity for a very long time, it, it can become easy to, to think about the gifts that God has given you. Maybe God's given you some kind of gift of personality. You're enjoyable to be around. People enjoy spending time with you. Hey, what an amazing thing. Remember who that came from, though. If God has given you some other sort of talent, you're skilled at, at something like public speaking. You're skilled at administration. You're skilled at organizing things. You're skilled at outreach. You're skilled at any sort of thing, whether it's, it's musical, artistic, conversational, anything. Remember who that came from. God provided those things. And as we're reminded in the book of Job, as he gives, he can certainly take away. We must remember that those things that we have that God has given us, they've come from him. We cannot attribute those things to ourselves. For once we do, we have placed our security in something that in any moment may no longer provide that for us. We must remember that only God can truly provide that security because only God is the one that can give us a strong enough foundation to get us through even the worst of circumstances. 
Place yourself in David's shoes. What a horrible place to be in, truly, at this moment. His own son desired his death. That is an awful position. David had been in many horrible circumstances previously, but this was probably the worst one, I would imagine. It's personal. It had to hurt seeing someone he loved so deeply reject him in every single aspect and rather prefer his own death. A terrible situation for David. There is no aspect of security that could have provided David with what he needed other than God alone. (laughs) Only God could have provided And thankfully, through all the experiences David had faced, he did place his security in God in this moment. He trusted in God. God gave him the man Hushai that allowed certain circumstances to happen where all of the plans of Absalom were passed on through some other spies, uh, were received by David. And we see the results of that in verse 22. Then David arose and all the people that were with him and they passed over Jordan. By the morning light, there lacked not one of them that was not gone over Jordan. Not one of them. God protected everybody involved in David's party. David, his family, his servants, all of their families, all of them were protected providentially by God, the only one that could have got them through this moment. Such a tragic moment, and yet God provided. What I'm amazed by is that David actually took some time in this stressful moment to write his thoughts down in Psalm 3. Psalm 3 exposes the mind and heart of David in one of his most tragic moments. Uh, The title of the psalm says so. It says a psalm of David when he fled from Absalom, his son. And these are his thoughts. A prayer that really reminds himself of who God is and where the best security is. He says, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there was no help for him in God, Selah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill, Selah. I laid me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people, Selah. In a time where nothing else could have held David strong, he knew that God alone could place him in a strong position. God alone was the reason that he was waking up every day. He couldn't have woken himself up. God God provided the breath in him to wake him up each day. And David was reminded through all that God gave him, even through the greatest troubles that he was facing, God would provide and God would protect because salvation belongs unto the Lord. David remembered this and he said, it doesn't matter if tens of thousands of people come up against me. It doesn't matter if this situation gets worse. I know who has me. I know who's in control of all of this. And he's the one that is my security. He's the one that I trust in. Not anything this world has to offer, not, certainly not myself, but rather the Lord who can provide in every aspect. Church, let's, let's, let's follow that example of David and remember that only God can provide the security that we need. For if we do not place ourselves in that security of God, uncomfortable circumstances will shatter us. Uncomfortable opportunities will shatter us. Uncomfortable scenarios will shatter us. Uh, Circumstances of life that may trouble us, that may bring us hardship, that may bring us some kind of turmoil, all of those things will shatter us. Don't be discouraged by that. Rather be encouraged that God, God is the opportunity to protect yourself from all of that because God is a security that can get you through anything. And that's despite who we are too, which is the most amazing thing. The fact that God loves us, no matter what we bring to the table, it doesn't matter how much we do. It doesn't matter how much garbage we baggage we have in our lives. It doesn't matter how much sin we bring to the relationship. God still desires that relationship. He still loves us and he still desires to be that security. It's our choice then to trust in him, to allow him to be that security for us and to not allow anything else, especially self, to insert itself in between us and God. Trust in God. Believe that he really will provide and that he really will protect because he desires to. And my goodness, he's created us. He knows exactly what we're going through. He faced it all on this earth. He knows what you're facing personally. He knows you more than anybody else. So trust in him. Follow that example of David. Trust in God. Place yourself in the security that he provides.